The following is a presentation of TFNN. The TFNN Bull Bear Trading Hour. Every trading day, live at 10 a.m. Eastern. Call now, toll free at 877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The TFNN Bull Bear Trading Hour. Now, Tom and Tommy O'Brien. Welcome, folks. Appreciate you growling and prowling with us out here. We have the Dow Industries down 36. NASDAQ off five. S&P's flat. Gold. Gold's up 470, trading at 13.93 an ounce. You got silver down six cents, fifteen dollars four cents an ounce. Light sweet crude down ninety cents, fifty eight dollars eighteen cents a barrel. That sixty dollar level uh, has given uh, oil a uh, problem. Pulled back pretty quickly from that yesterday. Yep. Notes, notes and bonds. Ten year note up by four ticks, one twenty seven twenty six. Thirty year up fourteen at one fifty five fourteen. And they just won't leave the top of this range, folks. So bottom line, uh, higher price, lower yield. King dollar, King dollar down 74 ticks, trading 96.335. The euro is at 112. The yen is at 108.23, and the pound is trading out there at 126 to one U.S. dollar. Let's go over to our man, Mr. Kevin Hinks at TD Ameritrade. Think of swim as we do every Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Great program here every trading day, folks. 11 to 12 Eastern Standard Time. If you want to understand option, option strategies, futures, great program. Just go to TFNN. Bottom line, if you haven't test driven yet, the Thinkorswim platform, you go to TFNN, hit the banner, bring it up. They'll allow you to trade with paper money. You can follow Kevin and his team each and every trading day. Kevin Hanks, what's going on? Good morning, Tom. Good morning, Tommy. Well, you know, you can almost feel this market starting to grind a little slower here. Oh, yeah. As we get in a three-and-a-half-day week and, you know, only two-and-a-half days or two-and-a-half days left here. So, uh I expect things to start slowing down. You're already seeing it. I mean, they made a veil attempt at trying to sell them here a little bit. Now it's, I think it's just sitting here. I think uh, people are going to start heading out of town. I think less eyes on this market. I think, uh, I don't know who will be watching the markets on Friday in terms of retail traders, but I'll tell you what, Jerome Powell will be watching. Yes. He'll be watching the unemployment uh, number and not non-farm payrolls on Friday because that's his last number before that July 31st Fed meeting. No. So he'll be watching for sure. Yeah, and you know, what's going to be interesting here, folks, is that the market, it might take as a market is set up, it wants to get a little bit higher. And Friday, because there'll be less market participants, it's going to be a perfect day. A jobs number comes out to just run it. <laughs> so we'll see. I mean, yeah. but, you know, it's, it's, you, <laughs> my history on days like this, like a, a an, you know, obviously slow holiday day yes. is this. I would literally stand in the pit and ask everyone if they were coming in. Right. You know, I and I'd, I'd say, and if a lot of guys were coming in, then I wouldn't come in. Okay. But if no one was coming in, then I'd be here. Yeah. Because you, if you could trade by yourself wow. or with a smaller group of people, I love that. No. I, <laughs> one of the biggest days that I ever saw in the marketplace, Kevin, it was... I, I, going back to like 1996 or something, it was the Friday after Thanksgiving, sure. and like it was a bull market anyway. But we were looking like it didn't matter what stock, everything was going up. Like, and it, we're all looking at each other like, "You're gonna be kidding me!" It just kept going and going and going. Right. I says, "This is amazing." And then, of course, it gave it all back the following Monday. But that Friday was so much fun; it was like insane. <laughs> right. And if you get days like that, you know, then, then it's worth opening up the computer, or as we used to say, going in, go, you know, going downtown and going into the pit. So sure. that's the kind of the way we do it. Remember, tomorrow's a half day. I know. So I expect really people to be parent positions and getting ready. And then, you know, Friday we'll have a payroll number. And if it's if it's something that causes the market to move, then I think pe people will pay attention. I think people will be watching it. If it, if a number that comes in line or muted or not any big market mover everyone will shut their computers off take the rest of the day off yeah no i can see that you know yeah because this deal in the middle of the week is really a tough deal i mean in general right. for the markets yeah you know on monday this past monday i was really surprised how much volume we actually got in the market and that's when i was looking i says you know what everyone's working this monday they came back because they're not going to work this friday you were talking about yesterday yesterday okay. yeah <laughs> you know we really got some good volume for a monday in the summer 
You know, it's like, okay. I mean, the, the VIX hung in there last week and last Friday because we had an event Yeah. over the weekend, right? right. They basically, Saturday w w was an event where the market was closed. So I think you're right. A lot of people were planning on and traded Monday. After that, you know, we'll see. I think it's already starting to slow down here. You're seeing the start, you know, my yeah. board's not moving very much. I don't no. know about yours. No. But, it's so kind of nice. I make... expect a kind of a grind slower as we move on here. Doesn't happen often. You just make it through Monday and you only got two and a half days left in the work week, right? Yeah. There's no doubt. Right. Yeah. Right. Especially it's kind of in a our nice business. Thing. Yeah. 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 It's, it's, a, it's a different animal. And all is, we, 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 Kevin's really saying, all it has to do is stay calm, folks. And people turn off the computers and say, like, okay, we'll see you Monday. Because, you know, no one. Except for that jobs deal. Yeah. yeah if exactly. you didn't have all that action on Friday, everybody yeah, already made no mistake, though. That jobs number, the number one data point of the month is jobs and, and unemployment. And yeah. we'll get that Friday. You know, frankly, I'm a little surprised we're getting it, but we are. So, you know, we have to be, you know, it's full trading day and we'll be here trading it. It's always amusing. A lot of those government numbers like uh, the EIA, um, crude, mm -hmm. natural yeah. gas, they get pushed back a day sometimes they do. when we get a Monday right. Memorial Day. Right. July 4th, Thursday. Get back on Friday, man. We got jobs for you. <laughs> right. Exactly. So, I mean, maybe if there's an outlier there, remember we had a, a disappointing number last month. So the, the expectations are for 165,000 right now. Let's see what we do. I, you know, we'll get a little look at it tomorrow with some eight, an, eight, an ADP number. So, uh, we'll, you know, we'll see what we get there and see if anything start, gets anyone's heart rate up. If not, it shut the computer off. Have a nice weekend. Yeah, yeah. you can see that. Uh, yep. You know, the the dollar, it's kind of interesting here. You know, this dollar is, is basically not dead yet. You know, it, 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 yeah. bottom line, yesterday you had a little strength. So it's like, okay, man, you know, one second, you know, you, you think, it, well, it, it broke its uptrend. But the bottom line is that that was quite a move yesterday, man. No, so, it was like a little strength, man. We're it, up it, like no, gangbusters. It was, yeah. it, was a, it was a good move higher, man. You know, and, so. and, w and what did that tell you, Tom, about how little strength in the dollar it takes for them to hit gold oh for sure you know i mean boy gold i mean now gold's uh, bouncing back here a little bit but that was a pretty big move there oh for i sure. mean it it was well over 1400 and now it's you yeah, know yeah, 14, all the way back down 1445 and you know the bottom line is this can get right back to the breakout area which is at 1461 you know, we hit 14... 1361. 1361, yeah, thanks. I mean, because that move was pretty extraordinary, too. I mean, we started off, you know, back at that uh, June 21st at... Uh, well, no. 1274. May, May 21st at 1274, ran to 1442, and the breakout area is at 1361, so... And that's how gold loves to react, drive everyone up a wall. <laughs> yeah, that. I mean, it, that was... You know, people were asking about gold... Um, last week and you know there's fundamental reasons why gold would go up obviously the relationship with the dollar but sometimes they just buy them yes and sometimes they just overbuy them right just like any oh, yeah. single trade that you can do any commodity you can do sometimes they they, they just buy them and they keep buying them they, you know it's wild i totally agree they always overbuy it and they always oversell it yep. if anything they tell people in, if you're in that market man you better make sure you like volatility man because it's coming at you do you know what i mean right. no doubt a, a great trader once told me, futures will go where they can hurt the most people. Yeah, that's a fact. Sure. That's a fact. Folks, and you saw that in gold. Oh, yeah. Folks, right here, 45 minutes from now, outstanding program. You want to understand option strategies? Check it out. Kevin, you have a great day, safe day, and, of course, we look forward to the program in 45 minutes. Thanks for having me on, guys. Thanks, Thank Kevin. you. Stay right there, folks. Tommy and I are coming right back. We have the Dow down to 40, NASDAQ off 10, S&P's a flat. We're coming right back. The Taz Profile Scanner is the most revolutionary piece of trading software that you will ever try. Wouldn't you like to approach the markets with confidence? As you begin your trading day, it's likely that you'll be faced with lots of decisions. In order to make the best decision, the first thing you'll need is a strategy that will help you minimize your risks. Whether we're in a bull or bear market, a good strategy is to have the tools needed to help you scan and analyze the markets before you trade. 
the TAS Profile Scanner instantly scans and filters over 2,500 global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, president of TAS Market Profile, the TAS Profile Scanner understands that in today's technological world, the use of top flight software applications, automated trading algorithms, and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. Whether you're looking at the trade matrix, the ETF heat grid, the market breadth, the landscape charts, or the many other features of the TAS Profile Scanner, this is a piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the markets and set up your trades. The team at TAS has even put together a 12-part video series to walk you through every aspect of the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find directly on the TAS order page at TFNN.com. Sign up now for only $97 a month with a risk-free 30-day trial so you have nothing to lose and everything to gain. See for yourself how you can harness the full power of the TAS Profile Scanner by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services section. Remember, with a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to lose. Don't let another day pass you by without trying out this amazing piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the market and how you place trades. Sign up today. Don't miss the last chance to sign up for the TAS Profile Scanner at just $97 a month. Starting July 1st, we're raising the price to $197 a month. This is your last chance to lock in the $97 rate for as long as you remain a subscriber. And as always, new subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so there's no risk. Don't miss this last chance to sign up at the low rate of just $97 a month. Sign up for the TAS Profile Scanner today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Folks, uh, Dow, Dow Industrials right now trading down 42. You got the Nasdaq off 12, S and P's off one, and let's go look at that uh, oil contract. So uh, we got a little uh, push lower inside this oil market. We sure do, right? So this is a five-minute chart we're looking at, and uh, oil just even since about right before the market opened, man, we were trading at 58.88. We're down a buck 30 in the last uh, less than an hour. So oil really accelerating, man. And then even if you back things up to yesterday, right, that's where we came into the morning. Monday at about 8 a.m. of $60.21. Look we're, at that, man. We're that's up there. two and a half dollars, right? Yeah, almost three bucks, really. I mean, we're 20 cents away from a $3 pullback in almost 24 hours. Call it 26 hours. Uh, yeah, quite a pullback, man. Quite a pullback that's for sure. That's wild, man. Yes. Telling Especially you. when the headlines yesterday had to do with uh, OPEC cuts. Yeah. And trade concerns easing, potential economic boosts across the globe demand for oil would benefit from that Mar i think that's the headline saying, here too let me just i just saw it like uh saudi coming across that that numbers no I, that, yeah yeah right um, but that's uh, yeah let's see that's i'll pull up oil for a cl you can just pull up the generic or, yeah it doesn't it's, i just gotta get the news uh, because right Yeah, so shaky outlook for demand counters the OPEC cuts. Um, of course, the Saudi minister is going to be enthusiastic about oil demand. Yeah. He's uh, he's the PR man for oil. Oh, big right? time. I mean, the Saudi minister. Um, so Saudi Arabia's energy minister was confident about the outlook for oil demand after OPEC's partner ratified the group's decision to keep cutting production. That's great. So the Saudis, they decide to cut, and he comes out and he says, guess what? We're really smart. We made a great decision. You know, right. as and in, of course, oil goes down. Right, right. As in so the market's not believing it, which is pretty wild. Man. 
Well, that's like a CEO coming out in the earnings call and saying, "Listen, we're going to make we're making great decisions and we're going to do really well in the future." It's like, oh, no, no, I'm, okay. I'm, I'm well, saying yeah. the, the cut in the the oil. Yeah, you can yes, cut it all yes. you want, but right. guess what? Something else is going on that either the U.S. is pumping more oil, so they have to keep cutting oil because they, their market is going to be smaller. Yeah, the overall market. Yeah. yeah. Um, and let's just jump back if we could and see where that headline. Yeah, so let's see what they got going in here. So this is just uh, an article oh, talking about manufacturing. disappointing manufacturing reports from the U.S., China, Europe that served to undermine the cuts as we were talking about. Yeah. Um, futures dropped as much as 2.5 percent, talking about oil. And uh, let's see, manufacturing reports came amid an agreement reached in Vienna by the alliance of major oil exporters and its allies to extend production cuts for another nine months. So Saudi Arabia said it would keep its output below 10 million barrels a day, even lower than required by the deal itself. Um, yet divisions remained over a Saudi push to target even deeper reductions. Yeah. Yeah, they're going to need deeper reductions. That's what it looks like. So let's go uh, take a look at that XLE and see how that's reacting. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. Then the end of that article, it said, you know, listen, even even if uh, some train concerns are easing, the manufacturing outlook is, is, is rough. Yeah, um, right. yeah. No doubt. Pretty wild. Yeah. Uh, let me just see if I can bring this generic. I'll do the active one. Now, this will be, uh, this is trying to catch up with it. This is a delayed quote, folks. Oh, yeah, look at this. That's, 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 once this, is, once we see that move, that's going to be good, quite a move. And you can see, uh, this whole, you know, getting over the $60, it's not that it's $60, it's that bar right there. The $61.48 to 57 was a vicious day. Man. May 23rd, yeah. yeah. Especially because it followed the previous day, if you back, right. I mean, a two-day run. Yeah. Where you go from the 22nd of $63, and before you know it, you're at $57. $6 pullback over the span of two days. Yeah, that's a pullback, man. That's... Man, if you're an oil trader, it's got to be like, I'm talking about oil, like, you know, doing hundreds of thousands of barrels. It's like every second is like you may either, well, I don't know if they, yeah, they're making money at this point, that's for sure, at this price. But you can see that, you know. It's huge moves. An hour it makes a huge difference. Oh, jeez, an hour. Huge difference. Ten minutes, right? Yeah. Two minutes, yeah. 877-927-6648. We take a look at some of the higher volume equities out here. You had Advanced Micro uh, down 36 cents. You get uh, Micron Tech off 61. The uh, Roku is down 161. Not a lot of action out here. NVIDIA, NVDA. Let's go take a look at a few of these chips. So the, the chips got themselves a, a good move. There's no two ways about that. You know, five days, uh, six days ago, you're down at 150. Got up yesterday to 173. Now, all the chips yesterday, folks, gave it up on price. They opened tremendously higher and then just came down and when you actually take a look at this and put this on a weekly these shots aren't that great looking <laughs> i mean yeah you know i mean you see you know you, you nvidia the high is 292 you're at 163 the last high which was generated out here in april was at 193 so this this you know downtrend is certainly not over they, you can see how fast these counter trend moves can be though i mean that's it's a good move off the bottom it's not a good move if you had been owning it for a, a good period of time yeah uh inside the dow industrials let's go see the strength versus the weakness inside the dow you got mcdonald's uh putting 11 positive points apple seven cisco five taken away from it boeing minus 18 chevron minus 12 united health minus 10. Let's go to good old Boeing and see what they're doing. It's crawling to the lower end of consolidation again. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Four days ago, it was trading 378, 353. These, these big stocks can really move around, man. <laughs> There's almost none bigger than Boeing right now yeah, in terms exactly. of what they're dealing with, too. Oh, my God. Yeah. And, you know... This is in that consolidation. This is still saying it wants lower price. So we'll see where the rest of this is going to uh, basically shake out. The dollar moves intriguing because if we look at this index, so what you have here, folks, is this. We had some good, that was strength yesterday for sure. Now, the real question is going to be, in my head, is that are you going to go try to tag the swing point first, meaning the 97,265, 
are you going to get you know a little consolidation here and just give it up you know it looks to me like this thing wants to tag it you know because that was when you get a move that's three quarters of a penny that we went up so it's it's a big number so um you know the the way that gold is trading that being said the way the gold is trading however that you know I don't mind how it's trading, meaning that it looked, but I expect it to go back to 1361. The reason being, you're going to see this, you got too far into this bar. You know, you know we were going into a bar with 543,000. We did it with 390, which, you know, it's less light of volume, but it's like, you know what, that 1361 is kind of just hanging there. And that's what markets like to do. The bottom line, that's the breakout area. You broke topside. I like the idea that we have volume at the high. Sure. And, you know, if we pull back with light volume there, guess what? That's that's a normal market move. And it's a lot better, I can tell you this. It's a lot better than moving ahead for like two months. And then all of a sudden you you, you pull back to the breakout area. Sure. Because then it's devastation. Yeah. And that would actually be like an exact 50% yeah. off of that yeah. run right there. Right. Yeah. So that's, that's, that's an anomaly that, retracement. That 38% sitting yeah. right at about 1380. Okay. Yeah. No, that's, that's cool. That's cool. Yeah. Uh -huh. Stay right there, folks. Tommy and I are coming right back. Our phone number is 877-927-6648. Right. Back. Hi, folks. Tom O'Brien here. If you'd like to get my daily newsletter, Market Insights, then now is a great time to sign up for a 30-day free trial. Every morning by 9.30, I send out my morning letter to subscribers with market commentary on a variety of markets, currencies, and commodities to keep investors up to date on the day's trading action. Included in Market Insights are specific buy and sell recommendations for stocks, ETFs, and even options, with stops and price targets included for every trade in my newsletter. If you'd like to try my newsletter risk-free for 30 days, then head over to the front page of TFNN and you'll find Market Insights under Trading Newsletters. I use my years of trading experience to bisect and dissect the market every morning and give my subscribers the most important information they need to know for the day ahead. I even issue afternoon updates for my subscribers whenever warranted with important market action. I'm always scouring the market for the next great trading opportunity. Sign up for your 30-day free trial to my daily newsletter, Market Insights, today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Wow! Go get them, folks! The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com.
Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow, Dow 14, Nasdaq's flat, S&P's uh, up three and a half, and uh, Bitcoin's living up to its legend of volatility. There's no doubt about that. Uh, this is quite a move, you know, whether we talk about the move that started down here at uh, June 5th, you're at 7,400. Five days ago, you're at 13,800, and we hit 9,660 this morning. And you're at 10,040. Quite a move, man. Watch out. <laughs> <laughs> That's, that yeah. is... And uh, you don't have to be a technician genius to see where that trend is going right now. In terms of lower highs, lower lows, almost across the board. This one snuck in, but lower low, lower low, lower low, right? Lower high, lower high, lower high. Where are we going to end up uh, after July 4th, man? Yeah, I Everyone know. Everyone going to be using, buying, their, selling their Bitcoin for the July 4th holiday? Could, you know, boy, this is going to be so hard trading something like this because you can imagine, folks, you know, just, you know, you're in a situation, you get the run all the way up there. Should I buy it? Should I sell it? What should I do? You know, and no matter what, you know, who knows what decisions people made, but it's like, wow, man. I mean, that is... Yeah, I mean, hindsight's always twenty twenty. as in, man, you know, you could have said the same thing almost at 8,000, right, when it goes from 4 to 8, but oh, guess yeah. what? You hold on, you're at 14 in no time, right? Yes. So so exactly. it's always... Uh, and, that, and that's how this thing trades. That's why, right. that's why, that's why people love it, right? As in, yeah. you know, even, even when it seems like it can be at highs, it can trade higher until it turns on a dime, man. Right. Watch out. Right. Yeah. So you got you know, because fast I guess, fingers. Because uh, the other side of that, this is the first turn, really, That's since, kind of since 3,300. Yeah. I used like, you know, 8,000, but yeah. right, it's like, you know, there's yeah. almost right. I mean, people were getting in. I mean, our man Paul from yeah. Nevada, right? I mean, you're 30, at 3,800, yeah. you're at 4,000. Right. Well, geez, when you were at 8,000, that's 100% profit. But guess what? You would have been giving up uh, even from here, another 25%, just going from 8 to 10, right? And that's that's if you just sell from 8 all the way up to 14, you decide to sell when it's down 40%, you still made an extra 25% going just from 8,000 to 10,000 percentage-wise. It's a scary game playing the uh, percentage gain loss on this because right. it moves so quick. I right. mean, 25% gain in anything, you'd say, oh my God, that's amazing, you know? The problem being in Bitcoin is that you can lose 25% in a heartbeat. Right. In most instruments, you're not gonna lose it in a heartbeat. And then you gotta get it out of the market. That, that's, yes. you know, so there's, yep. that, there's, there's a little bit of risk. Yeah. Uh, variable of risk in there that has to do with just the transactional risk right you don't have transactional risk buying a stock as in you're gonna put your money in TD Ameritrade yeah you're gonna buy that stock you're gonna receive that stock you're gonna be able to sell that stock if there's a market yes. <laughs> um, and your money's safe while it's in there that environment does not exist just yet on, right. on Bitcoin so uh, now we get the oil caught up a bit uh, with us. Uh, so we hit that 57.50. I want to pull that up. Yeah, so for I can the live. Yeah, I'm sitting 57.66. Okay, so just so hanging we're, we're kind of where we are right so, at the hour. Yeah. So when you're looking at this, you're going to see, folks, is that this blew away the, the lows of two days ago with some good volume. Uh, so we take this. Well. Gonna have, it's gonna have a little support there at 57.37, right there. I mean, that's, let me put this up. We'll see what it can do, you know. There you can see that, that's 855,000 contracts right there, 57.37. Look at this, we hit 57.38. It's so strange when that happens. But, hey, we'll see where this shakes out. Uh, gasoline, let's see what good old gasoline is doing here. July contract, yeah. We're already in July. If you just type XB, it'll probably bring us right to the uh, generic if you want, right? There we go. Let's see where they get us to. Okay, so you're down four pennies. It's 189. Yeah? Yeah, not bad, right? No. You know, have, not having that refinery, it's going to be really interesting to see, like, how does that work on a longer period of time? Yes. You know, yeah, that northeast refiner that yeah. shut down. Doesn't seem like it reverberated too harshly through no. that uh, contract. So there's yes. obviously other 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 refiners going to pick up the slack um, because you didn't see any type of really drastic move. It just, I like think, that. I guess it just takes time to move them around the tankers. Yeah, right. Get them up to New York. A little bit of logistic difference right. of where they're going to send that oil to get refined. Yeah, yeah, no doubt. Eight seven seven nine two seven six six four eight. Let's go over and take a look at the GDX. 
uh, inside the gold market. So we had out here yesterday is that you can you almost got that gap filled. I, I suspect this thing's going to get filled. You know, the, the the lower end of this is 2403. Yesterday, you get down to 2453, and you know you're bouncing today, but it looks to me like that the the, the the market itself looks to me and wants to go back to this breakout area. As long as you do it light volume, it's great. That's, that's the bottom line. And what I said earlier, folks, what you don't want to happen is that let's picture if, you know, you keep expanding. Well, we, we know that we almost did a, we did a 1 to 1.50 ABC structure up. If we did, if we extended that more, then it could be a huge problem, you know, because then, you know, even Kevin was saying they're buying, 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 and then they buy, buy, buy more. Then guess what? You've got to make sure that you can sell it to someone because, over the course of time, folks, okay, that's what, it, you know, there has to be a buyer on the other side of it. You got it, man. And when everyone's in, guess what? There's no more buyers. That's right. Who are you going to sell it to? Yeah. Let's go over and take a look at the uh, Asian market. So we'll go to Shanghai. So Shanghai last night was flat. Okay. Yeah. Looks like it's on the rise. It is. No, there's no, there's no doubt. That's look at, look at that. So you know, you had decent volume. It's 24 billion, and now you're going into that 32 billion. But it looks like it's it's trying to get up into this gap. The, the gap out there is that 3,050, and uh, 3,048 last night. So yeah. This is. This looks to me like it's off the bottom. You know, it come down. Tested this uh, low out from January, uh, yeah, January 2016, and you're still in a consolidation. Yeah, you know. Yeah, I mean things looking up for China, man. All of a sudden, you know, Huawei's not a concern. We're doing business again. And a great question in the den saying, I thought the vice president said that Huawei is a national security threat, and now we can do business. Well, I'm waiting for that answer too. Oh, so, I think everyone's so, waiting for that answer. So we'll find out. You know. But uh, you know, things change a lot over the weekend. So China looking up, man, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Eight seven seven nine two seven six six four eight. Let's go take a look at a couple of the big dogs. Amazon being the <laughs> the biggest dog. We're out almost here. on Prime Day, man. July fifteenth and sixteenth. Two days. Okay. Two days. Um, it'll always be interesting. They get to cherry pick the stats that come out of that, right? And uh, they always choose some good ones in terms of just record breaking this, record breaking that. They're always selling. Um, Two days of prime. I know, right? They're always selling lots of those Alexa Echo devices. Right. Uh, they love to. I mean, they love to. I, I'm sure they push those out. I was going to say a break even. I'm sure they push those out at a loss, man. Because right. they, they get yours. Those they like to give them away. That's it, exactly. If people would use them. Well, right? uh, they get it. Not quite, right? Not quite. They still get 20, 30 bucks, as in. It's just like Gillette. If they want to give away, they'd be giving them away. They raise a handle, they want to sell you the blades. Right, right. You know? No, totally. Yep. 877 927 6648. Give us a call, folks. Want to know what's going on in the yacht world. In the world of the markets, folks, coming into July 4th. Bottom line, flat market, slightly higher. Oh, back in the green, man. Yeah. Dow's up 16, NASDAQ's up 5, SP's up 4.5. We'll come right back. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you'd like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. 
Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Folks, 877-927-6648. Now, there's, there's a story in the journal this morning. This is quite a story. Uh, it's right on the front page, too, folks. And what it's about is that it's about the ETF sectors. Right? Okay. And it's specifically about bonds, uh, bond ETFs. And what it's about, so check this number out. This is pretty amazing. That the, a couple of the bond ETFs yesterday hit... One trillion dollars in funds. In funds. Okay. Okay. And what? If we go back, whether it's I forgot whether they said five or ten years. We'll say it's ten years. There wasn't such a thing ten okay. years ago. So BlackRock, they, they, they're the sponsors of it. Yes. They're saying that they think that that is going to go exponential. Okay. And bottom line, you know, have ten trillion in it five years from now. Yeah. Now the thing that's pretty wild about this, this is you know, so the the, the pros and cons kind of go like this. That that means that you can push more bonds out, and I'm not I'm not just talking about treasuries. I'm talking about corporate bonds. That they, okay. they what they're doing is they compile them together with, with different ETF structures. Okay. okay. And so the article was about that. Hey, listen, man, these really shouldn't be put into that because if people sell them out, like you sell the Q out or sell the spy out well they're not as liquid as the treasuries are you know so it's going to be intriguing watching this whole thing shake out because okay. that's the chicken or the egg sure you know and I mean? that's you're talking about the corporate bonds aren't yes. as liquid as the treasuries so you're lumping them together in etfs that's yeah. correct right you know the thing that's amazing to me was the number though i would love to see uh that is staggering you know yeah. deal with a trillion. it i would love a to trillion. see though because they have to have mechanisms in place in terms of end of day rebalancing type mechanisms so if it's not easier, how do they plan on doing that? That's right. Right? And I'm sure they have a plan, though, so I'd love to see how that plan, because you can either buy or sell what you need to to have the underlying instruments for the ETF. That's right. Or you can't. Exactly. Right? So it's, I'd, exactly. I'd love to get a breakdown there. Right. Yeah. And illiquid uh, bonds can be a huge problem. Illiquid anything when you're trading, you know. Like when you yeah. buy in real estate, you know it's illiquid. Do you know what I mean? When you're buying a security, sure. you know, most folks think that, okay, you get a security, it's liquid. You know yes, what I mean? You, yes. it's, that's why people like securities. You yes. get in, you, you know, you can, you can get a loss, that's for sure. But guess what? You can get out. Well, yeah, and you have a tight bid offer spread, so you're not paying that spread right. to get out. Right. You know, you're paying, now we got penny, penny spreads, which is very liquid, very easy to get in and out, right? It is. Yeah. Let's go take a look. This is going to get interesting here. So we had Royal Gold as well as... Um, 
Look at this. Royal staying over the ties. Hanging this, tough, man. Yeah, this is hanging tough. Look at this. So, what was it? 10. Yeah, 184. You're at 109.93. And the further this can get away from this uh, big consolidation, the better off it is. And let's go to Franco Nevada, FNV. Same deal. What's that? That's. I don't know. Okay, no. So Franco Nevada got over it. That was the yeah. 86. Uh, 06, uh, 86, 96. It made it to 86, 06. 86, 06. Made it to 86, 83. 86, 81. Yep. You know, it just basically still hanging here. Yeah. So we'll yeah. we'll see how that shakes out. But that's no doubt uh, two equities that uh, are leading the charge to higher price. On the flip side of higher price, let's just jump back to Bitcoin because I wanted to see uh, some of those expansions. Man, it's pretty crazy when you go. I just wanted to see what the retracement was going all the way from this level, man. Because yeah. we made, I, just, I think I just clicked the wrong one. We have retracement. Whoops, come on, cooperate with me. There's that R. Yeah, so we're now right on, I mean, pretty that interesting that we're sitting, I mean, that 382 right. is 9847. We came down to 9660. This would be a good place for a bounce, man. Quite a pullback, right? You know, yeah. the world's now talking about, whoa, did you see that pullback on Bitcoin? Oh, no. Right? Right as we come into the weekend, man. Um, and the 50% level is going to be 86. So that's that's a good cry from where we are. And look, look at that bounce we just got, man. We're at 96. Boom. We're 700 bucks. We're, we just got an 8% pop um, in that price. I know. I know. It's, it's Can't help but chuckle, man. Really? Well, it, it, what I'm chuckling about is that they, you know, when it was at 3,200, I was looking, saying, ah, it still can go to 2,200. It's a thousand bucks. Could have, I don't, man. You know, and then up here though, at 10,000, oh, that can go to 7,000, like, you in know? a heartbeat. Yeah. It was just at seven, right? I mean, it, in a heartbeat for sure. Yeah. Wow. No time. It's, you know. Yeah. It's gonna be around though. That's you know, and what's gonna get intriguing here, right? Kind of where we are right now. If this isn't another wipeout, and this thing starts trading up to the fourteen thousand in the next, you know, two or three weeks again, it's gonna be like, oh no. Sure. You know, this thing's going to twenty thousand again. That you're gonna you hear know? it for sure, man. Because when you actually pull this up, and put this on a couple of years, you know, it's like, man, you, you, once you launch that uh, eleven thousand, which we did. It's like, okay, you're going to build cars, and, you know, the next leg up is at 19500 And a monster deal in the middle of it, but That's guess what? That's for sure, man. It's, it is what it is. And, you know, I was looking, you know, think about it, like, money-wise. I was talking about this yesterday. So first, you know, if we go back, you know, 125 years, everyone was dealing with gold and silver, right? Then they figured out, okay, no, we're going to have fiat money for gold and silver. Everyone got used to that, right? And then in the 70s, plastic came in. And yes. Merrill Lynch was one of the first ones. They were, they were a monster in the business. Then ATMs came in. And really, people are using plastic. And they have been exponentially. Do you know what sure. I mean? So it's like, what is the difference between using plastic if, in fact, they can get a system going down that, okay, now it's digital. <laughs> You know? Yeah, a little different though. The plastic is just facilitating how you use in dollars. That's right. all it is. It's just a system to allow you to gain access to debt by using dollars. Right. But that's what, isn't that what digital's going to be? Same thing with Facebook's no, going to be. No, but you're, do, not, gaining, you're not gaining access to debt by using Bitcoin. Do you see it? By using plastic, though, sometimes you post it. It's a credit card facility. I know you can use your debit card, too, if that's what you're saying. Right. But, that's, that's, just, but that's just a different way of pulling out dollars out of your pocket. That's just technology of pulling out dollars. No, that's my point. But you're not pulling dollars out of your pocket when you're pulling Bitcoin out of your pocket. But that's how they want to make it. But that's not it. But that's not my yet. point. But you're never going to be. It's a different currency completely versus when you pull out your bank card, you're pulling out dollars. They're right. just allowing you a different way to pull out dollars. But you're not pulling out dollars. You're pulling out Bitcoin. You see, that'd be like using your bank card to use so, euros or to use pesos. You see, you're still using dollars when you pull it out. That's my point. Right. But when you're using, uh, how are you going to buy Bitcoin? You're going to buy them with dollars. So now you have an electronic account. Then I'm going to buy a shirt. But just stay right there. That's the crux. You, you, you don't have any dollars anymore. Right. Once you do that. Right. Well, I have only digital. 
Right. But you have something completely different. That's my point. Okay. You right. never had to do that. Right. When you pull, you, all the bank did was just allow you an easier way to pull dollars out of your pocket and right. pay for something. Right. Um, you know. Gold. Let's go go back to gold because that's it. Look at this. We What's got, it doing? We got a little pop here. We're going to be at 1400 by the time we... No, I don't think so. Oh, no, I don't know. I think tough, man. We got a pop. Oh, well, we got, only we two got, bucks away. That's yeah. what... Three bucks, yeah. We got two dollars and sixty cents, and we got seven minutes, man. That's a good setup. Yeah. Stay right there, folks. Tommy and I come right back. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12 12, 6, and 3 months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of tfnn.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step by step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. It's amazing to think that Tom O'Brien started his weekly gold report 17 years ago with the first issue published April 7th, 2002, when gold was trading at under $300 per ounce. Gold peaked at more than $1,900 in 2011, and after spending many years consolidating at lower prices, gold may be poised for its next big run. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, South Africa, African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. As of April 1st of this year, the Gold Report currently has eight active positions with an average unrealized profit of almost 8% for each open trade. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your Gold Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Don't let Gold's next big run pass you by. Sign up today. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. And in the age of data, you know, this has been going on for a, a good bit of time, but this is going to get really uh, more intense, I think. Yeah, so head fund, hedge funds tracking private jets. It makes sense. I believe this is going on probably longer right. than this article almost insinuates. Um, so just a couple article uh, paragraphs here as we wrap up the hour. So online aviation trackers that focus on commercial traffic, including flight aware, allow anyone to see the position of thousands of airborne planes based on a part of raw data feed provided by the FAA. What's not visible are the 28,000 private aircraft. But then it says, but the FAA isn't the only data source. Many planes are equipped with technology called automatic dependent surveillance broadcast, which transmits the transponder code. Um, call sign, model type, position, airspeed. As of January of next year, the FAA will mandate that any aircraft flying in most U.S. controlled airspace be equipped with this, and anyone with the right antennas can pick up 
that data and observe virtually all passing aircraft. Um, a call called the exchange takes information from a network of antennas around the world. So it makes sense. And they kind of bring up here how they had... Uh, yeah, in April, right? You had a Gulfstream owned by Occidental, spotted at Omaha. Yep. We on the Oracle of Omaha out he there. Did a Berkshire. deal two days later. Um, right. Two days later, Buff, um, Buffett announced ten billion, $10 billion dollar investment in Occ Occidental. Right. So yeah, it would make sense. You know, those CEOs. They're not flying commercial when they're trying to do $10 billion deals and get out there, especially because they're not flying commercial because you don't want to be the guy showing up in Omaha on, on the Delta flight and you're the CEO of Occidental. So, nope. <laughs> nope. Pretty and, interesting. And then, you know, if we take a look at uh, this, stay with the, the oil business for a second, um, uh, Weatherford, uh, this is, we had been talking about this before. Five, bottom line, they went BK. And. Oil service business. They were doing 15 billion, um, but guess what? You know, now oil has come back, but like you own the oil company, you're not giving us many contracts because okay. everyone's worried about like where we going. Sure. Stay right there, folks. We got the Think and Swim coming up next, and we got our man, Mr. Basil Chapman, Steve Rhodes, Dave White. Be back this afternoon. Thanks, pal. Thanks, man. Yeah, I'll get him, folks.